Hi, everyone. We'll go ahead and start. Uh, welcome to the Step Out of the Dark into the New World of Fish Automation webinar. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, my name is Crystal Melcher. I'm the Client Services and Events Manager with ASI. I'm joined by Brian Kirk, General Manager at Biodot, and my colleague, Bobby Joe Shirley. Bobby Joe is a Technical Sales Specialist here at ASI. Today's presentation will be divided into three parts. Brian and Bobby Joe will first discuss the benefits of fish automation from the initial slide preparation to scanning and analysis. Then we'll present uh, the results of a time study that was performed, uh, which resulted in a time savings of about 60%. Lastly, we will end the presentation with a Q&A session so feel free to submit your questions via the questions drop-down. Uh, it should be located to the right of your screen in the control panel. And it will look something like this, what I have on the slide. So feel free to type in your questions there, and we'll do our best to answer as many as possible during the Q&A session. I will now pass the floor on to you, Brian, so you can begin the presentation. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Crystal. And uh, I just want to take this chance to, to thank ASI um, for letting Biodot uh, participate in their, the webinar, webinar series. Uh, ASI has been a fantastic partner of ours. Um, I think they, they recognized sort of the power and the uniqueness of our technology early on, and so they uh, really worked with us uh, well for the past few years, and, and hopefully um, at the end of this, um, even if, if folks that are participating, if you're not ready to buy into the technology and the platform, uh, hopefully you you agree with us that we've uh, created something something very unique. So, uh, for s those of you who don't know Biodots, uh, Biodots, uh, while we are relatively new to the cytogenetics community. Uh, we're not a startup. Um, Biodot has been uh, in the medical diagnostic business for over 25 years. Um, our core competency is really in ultra low volume dispensing. Um, and so we have built uh, sophisticated manufacturing systems and R&D systems for diagnostic companies um, that need to just deliver incredibly small volumes onto targets, uh, usually medical devices or some sort of microfluidic device. <coughs> Um, and so if you think about Biodot, you can sort of think of us as this biological inkjet printer. Uh, we're able to dispense proteins or cells or DNA uh, onto surfaces down into the nanoliter range, um, so fractions of a microliter. Um, and so the biojet technology, this, this, this inkjet technology that we, that we have is really the, the engine behind what we call CellWriter. And uh, CellWriter was designed uh, with a group of a group of us internally um, and some cytogeneticists that we that we worked with a long time ago, and the the core the core concept of CellWriter is really to become the uh, the, the key sort of workhorse between harvesting and microscopy. So um, we want to be able to produce slides both for carry for karyotyping uh, for hematolo hematological fish, but then also um, FFPE. So if you think about the workflows that are important to folks in cytogenetics, um, you know, one that we won't spend too much time talking about today um, is, is obviously classic cytogenetics or karyotyping. Uh, our instrument will uh, start by normalizing those pellets. So if you think about uh, the workflow, um, samples come directly out of, out of harvest. You take the pellets, uh, you load them directly onto our system. Our system will take a measurement of each of those samples. Um, understand and measure the concentration of those pellets and then automatically add fix uh, to each of those samples so that they're at the, the correct dropping density. Once that happens, uh, then the system will take those pellets and then drop them onto slides. And for cytogenetics, we do something sort of unique. Um, uh, instead of our dispensing very large droplets onto slides, what we'll do is if you think of a sort of an inkjet printer, we can actually print um, very, very small drops down into the 500 nanoliter range and we'll print uh, a field of small droplets onto a slide, all the while uh, controlling temperature and humidity, and we've created this really unique way of, of creating uh, metaphase spreads. 
uh, when it comes to fish, and you know, fish is going to be the lion's share of, of what we, we talk about today, and especially the um, the uh, array, uh, the fish array technology we've developed at Biodot. Uh, the first step, obviously, is is plating the, the slide or the cells onto the slides. Um, we also start with the normalization step. Once we've normalized the pellets to the right dropping concentration, we will drop those slides. Um, we apply probe. Uh, the system will automatically cover slip. Um, some of our options, our system options will perform the denature and hybridization. Uh, the system will apply DAPI and then also a cover slip and prepare the, prepare the slide for um, further analysis. And then we're also excited, we'll I'll spend a little bit of time today talking about um, sort of our newest application, which is for FFPE, where we have what we call dynamic probe dispensing, where the instrument will actually target a region of interest and dispense uh, probe exactly where you want it at the correct volume. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, sort of the, the core of what we've done with, with ASI is really integrate um, sort of our, our flagship technology, the fish array technology uh, for cell genetics so that all the slide, every slide that's produced on the cell writer platform can go directly onto the ASI um, platform. And uh, for those of you who are not aware of what we've done, uh, we feel like we've we've uh, done done something very unique for cytogenetics. Um, again, we call it the fish array technology. And what we're able to do now is we can we can produce up to eight unique fish assays on a single slide. So whether you're uh, producing a BCR able or a CLL or an MDS or even a myeloma panel. Um, all of those assays can be performed on a single slide um, through the cell writer platform. So we'll read the barcode on the slide. Uh, it looks into the LIS system. LIS says this is John Torres. John Torres is a CLL. Uh, we start by dropping the cells, uh, but then we will also apply the appropriate probes at the right, at the right volume. Um, a key aspect of the technology, what we really, we really like to focus on is, is the, um, the, the uh, ability to deliver a quality assay um, every time. Most of us, uh, are, uh, the cell writer technology is, is mostly known for um, the reduction in probe. Um, it has a tremendous impact on, on your lab economics, and, and we can certainly sort of focus on that. But, um, you know, I, I think the whole point of cell writer, when we first started this program, we we wanted to build a single platform that can produce a more consistent result. Um, as most of us know, dropping slides for cytogenetics um, has largely been uh, deemed as an art form. Um, you know, we've taken sort of a different approach, more of a systematic approach, uh, and wanted to create a single um, assay and platform uh, that can produce uh, consistent slides uh, day in and day out. So putting more than one uh, probe on a slide is a, is a uh, is a big task. Um, as many of you know, and I'm sure in most of your laboratories, uh, most labs that we've interacted with are using more than one probe, more than one vendor. And if you think about it, these are different different genes, um, mostly in different uh, buffer systems. Um, yet the challenge of, of, of the multiplex, you know, the, the core challenge of the multiplex is now that we're putting a single, we're, we're putting all of the probes onto a single slide, we need to create a single protocol. And as you can see here, we have uh, three different probes, um, but uh, they are from three different suppliers. Um, all of them were put on the same slide. All of them went through the same protocol with respect to dropping the nature hybridization um, and we're very proud, I'm very proud of the work that uh, the folks at Biodot have done uh, so that we now have this single protocol that can work with any of the probes that you, uh, you work with in the laboratory. Yeah. Everyone wants to, wants to see slides, or, or sorry, uh, images of, of, of chromosomes. Um, we're, we're very um, fortunate uh, to have worked with Dr. Mowry's lab uh, in Chantilly, Virginia. Uh, he was kind enough to share some some uh, some images. Uh, like I said, everyone wants to. No, no one believes that uh, that an instrument can can deliver um, consistent chromosomes for 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 metaphase finding. Uh, so those are, these are some of the, the images that we like to we like to share. Um, and like I said, we're very fortunate to be working with with big labs. You know, I, I think from our perspective, the early adopters 
uh, that we've worked with um, in the Cell Rider program have been fantastic. Um, they really put their arms around us. Um, they've had it. They've been able to um, uh, realize some tremendous benefits, obviously, of the technology that we'll we'll talk about. Um, but really, uh, Cell Rider is a reflection of the interactions that we've had with, with these laboratories, and we're incredibly proud to have uh, worked with these labs. And like I said, um, one of our newer applications is now for for FFP. Uh, we call it uh, dynamic probe dispensing. And so, the instrument, when it reads the slide on the bar or the barcode on the slide, it recognizes that it might be HER2 or ALK. Uh, then it goes and gives the user a real time image of the slide. And so, um, the users um, can then use the software to determine which cover slip uh, will. Uh, correctly uh, cover the region of interest. They do that through our software. Uh, that information then feeds back to our automated dispensing system. So when it picks up uh, uh, HER2 or ALK, it will pick up the probe, dispense it exactly in the right location and the right volume. And when it comes to cell router, um, we, we like to take a step back because we don't we don't believe that the technology is just about automation. We don't believe it's really just about our slide technology. We think that the third leg of that stool is really um, really our software. Um, if you think about it, you know the instrument sort of watches the entire life cycle of that slide. It knows when it was dropped. It knows how it was dropped. It knows which probes have been dispensed to each of the slides. Um, it knows when it was dappied. Um, we know the lot number of every probe that was dispensed onto the slide. And so, you know, with our interactions with, as I mentioned, the, the early adopters, we, we've had this feedback um, loop and this sort of ecosystem that we've built where we said, look, we have this great rich data set. How do we, how do we access it? And so um, many of the tools that we've developed have really been a reflection of that. And so now CellWriter has things like a fully um, evolved probe inventory system if you think about it, the instrument is the thing that decrements the probe and uses, utilizes the probe. So when a user walks up to it, it beeps in the barcode, or they beep in the barcode, sorry. Um, when the system asks for BCR able, it beeps in. It says, ah, okay, I know the expiration date. I know the lot number. I know how much volume is in that, that tube. It will take what it needs. Uh, it will dispense it onto its slides, and then it will update your inventory system. So as a manager or a director, if you're curious about how much uh, 5Q or 7Q you might have in your, your inventory, you walk in, walk up to the system and, and you can utilize it. Um, other aspects of the system or the software, you know, we, we, uh, we're basically a database. And so if you're curious about how many uh, CLLs you did over a six month period, you can walk up to the system uh, and, and type that in and, or, or query the system and it will give you that answer um, in real time. And most importantly, and the reason why we're here today, uh, we were um, we we realized very early on, and, and as well as ASI, that when we create these slides, especially for fish and for the for the fish array, um, we know everything about it. We know where the probes are. We know which probes were dispensed, uh, and so we knew that all we had to do was figure out a way to get that into the microscope, so that when they read the barcode on the slide, they say, Ah, I know exactly what this is. I know where those probes are. And um, I know how to read them. And as we've seen, and we'll talk about uh, talk about later, the data and what we found is that because we've miniaturized this this assay, the, the um, if you think about the fish array, we've, we've basically taken advantage of our smallness, right? We dispense half a microliter of sample, half a microliter of probe, and we use a smaller piece of real estate on that slide. And that's really important for a microscope uh, because, as as we all know, and I'm sure Bobby Joe will talk about. With fish, we now have to deal with uh, things like Z-stacking, <clears throat> and so that can um, slow down the process. And uh, what you want to have is a situation where you know where the cells are, you know that they're in a, in a tight uh, coordinate system, uh, so the instrument can be more more efficient with regard to to analysis. And so uh, we've now sort of figured out how to, we've cracked that code. We figured out how to give our data, the data that's collected on our platform. Pass it on to the the ASI platform, uh, and those slides can be read uh, seamlessly. So we're incredibly excited about it. We've worked uh, we've worked at this for a long time. 
um, Bobby Joe and the team at ASI have been fantastic, and um, we're just you know pleased to be here and and uh, report back. So uh, at that point, I'll give it over to Bobby Joe. She can talk about the the analysis, and then um, at the end, we'll talk about a time study that we 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 worked on together to uh, to prove the prove the benefits of, of what we've done. All right, thank you, Brian. Um, hi, everybody. Again, my name is Bobby Joe uh, from Applied Spectral Imaging. I'm sure some of you are probably very familiar with ASI. Uh, for those of you who aren't, we have been in the cytogenetics market for over 25 years. We have many platforms um, around the country and around the world um, for automated automation with G-band metaphase finding platforms, and a lot of people are very familiar with that. And the last few years, you know, our focus is really to try to help laboratories become more automated with their fish um, portion of the lab as well. So let's go over some of the challenges that we have for fish. Challenges we see in a laboratory can be the variability we get with within and between slides um, due to different factors in the lab. The prevalence of wet lab repeats due to poor quality slides or faint signals. <clears throat> Bleaching of signals over time, so your slides have a very limited lifetime. Exhaustive scoring in the dark room for technologists, uh, which requires them to have a good understanding of how to operate a fluorescent microscope. It's tedious repetition of switching the filters and to use the focus up and down for seeing all the signals. <clears throat> also, one of the other things that can be a challenge for some labs or some states is just finding enough fish technologists as well. Um, so with those challenges, <clears throat> we find that there's really a wide and growing need for automated scanning and fish analysis in the laboratories to help overcome some of those struggles. <clears throat> so automation, We'll go over how that can help with the time savings, um, ergonomics for the lab, and getting your fish techs out of the dark room. So how can automation help for your laboratory? So for one, it can offer diagnostic confidence with accurate computer-assisted analysis, which you can see here in this picture, some statistics, which can then be looked at by additional users and confirmed uh, very easily. Also lab productivity, uh, digital workflows enable labor efficiencies and additional time savings for the lab every step of the way. And also your on-screen analysis experience. On-screen fish analysis in the light significantly improves the technologist's user experience. They don't have to be stuck in a dark room all day. Um, the ergonomics are much better for working on a computer screen compared to being tied to a physical microscope all day long. So how do we get there with automation? So for one, it definitely starts with the wet lab. And this is again, going back to the BioDot um, platform as well, because once you have that consistency within the slides, it'll make everything easier and flow more seamlessly through the automation of your digital scanning and analysis platform as well. So first it starts with that wet lab process, and then we'll need an automated microscope like you see here um, with that can scan all of your slides and do the image acquisition. Um, so slides can now be loaded all onto a machine. Um, this particular um, ASI tray loader system can hold 99 slides that can be loaded. And then it's a walk away platform. There's a digital barcode reader, oil dispenser. Uh, you can do any kind of fish scanning from suspension cells to metaphase finding for fish metaphases as well as tissue fish. And then the next component is having your on-screen fish analysis software for your review and then also convenient reporting and LIS integration. So once you're finished the analysis, all the images, the data can be easily sent to your LIS system. So with the automation, we're trying to 
provide a better user experience. So no more dark room. Step out of the dark. You'll, your text will be happier. There is less eye strain um, for text not having to sit in the dark. And again, it's better for the ergonomic posture. At ASI, we've developed user-friendly analysis and review tools, which we'll go over to try to help as well the user experience for transitioning to digital analysis. So we have very easy classification and review capabilities. Um, here in this large window, you'll see high image quality with a digital Z stack of every cell. The Z stack can also be scrolled through in a, in a 3D functionality that allows you to actually scroll through all the layers. Down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the multi-layer view. So you can see each color separated out. This is a Eurovision sample. So we were seeing the green, the red, the aqua, and the gold. Um, so that's a very helpful view. You'll see that for every cell um, that you click on through the gallery. And over here to the right hand side, that is the gallery view uh, for fast and easy analysis of the cells through that gallery, as well as real time statistics down below here. So as a slide is scanning, the system is automatically analyzing every field of view as it goes. Um, and as well as any updates you make in the system are automatically adjusting the numbers of cells counted, cells analyzed and reviewed. So some of the features we have for automated cell analysis would be the image enhancements, which you can see here helps get rid of background and can really help enhance even the weakest of signals that you'll have in your samples. Here's the nuclei segmentation as it's capturing each frame, the system is automatically detecting those cells. It does a great job of actually separating even touching cells or clumps of cells together. So you won't be missing any of those. The user can decide whether to count overlapping cells. And then the signal detection within a cell. Again, for a Eurovision sample, that shows you the computer's overlay of how it detected all those signal patterns. And then based on those signal patterns it detected, it's going to do automatic cell classification based on the criteria set up by the users. You have your different categories here in this graph for statistics. So more of the benefits here of on-screen analysis. Again, we try to make this very similar to similar, but even better than the manual experience. So we have the 3D focus so that users can still feel like they can focus up and down through the layers that were captured. Also this multi-layer display, I would say is it's even better to be able to see this all at one time, as opposed to on a manual scope, you're constantly having to flip back and forth through those filter cubes, especially if you have something like a Eurovision or even a three color probe with Aqua. Um, so having it all laid out there right in front of you is a real benefit as well. And then again, this is just a closer look at the computer signal detection. It goes from the left hand side to kind of what the original image looks like, which we always save that original view. So you can go back and look and compare and see what signal quality was like to then the enhancement view and the computer signal detection, which you can view either over the top of the cell or as well view it over just a black background to really see where those signals are. <clears throat> if your laboratory is struggling a bit with the move from completely manual to completely automated, then we've created another workflow that really helps the lab for transitioning period of bringing automation in house. This will allow you to still have automatic scanning of all the slides. And when you have the review, we've set up a double blinded analysis. So this is very similar to manual process. Uh, user A will log into the system and open a case. They will review the first 100 cells in the gallery or whatever number you define. This is a predefined um, setting and, um, or sorry, a user-defined setting that can be changed. 
So they'll get a sound notification and a pop-up once, once those 100 cells are scored, and then their results will be hidden from any other users within uh, the Case Data Manager. Once user B has logged into the system and they open that same case, they're going to be blinded to those first 100 cells that were um, reviewed by the first tech. So they will start at 101 or 120, wherever the first tech left off. And they will continue, once they score 100 cells, they will also get the pop-up and sound notification. And once they've completed their score, then the results become available um, in the Case Data Manager to see the final scores of each user and a cumulative score. Now, if there is some discrepancy between the users, this computer can automatically send a pop-up again that a third reader is required. And this is again based on criteria that we can set for you in the system. Um, so for example, if one user is over the cutoff range and one is under the cutoff range, you can call a third reader. Um, and then in that case, a third, the third reader would log into the system and they will see the user's results to start with and they can actually review a case first to decide if the third read is really needed or not. And then you can add additional users um, to add the third read. Another workflow in our software that you can use is our dual scan metaphase interface flow. Uh, this can be great for when you're validating new probe uh, in the laboratory that it will scan for the metaphases so you can confirm the location of probe. Uh, it can also be used for any of those cases where maybe you have an abnormal karyotype and you really want to try to confirm it in fish or on a metaphase. Uh, you can have the system actually search for both metaphases and nuclei at the same time, and then it will go back at a high magnification to capture those metaphases and then continue on with scanning the nuclei you need um, to get your 200 cells. So again, to kind of overview some of the benefits of the analysis, the quantitative fish analysis, is you get very high image quality in the system, easy to see the signals, the smart algorithms for automated cell detection, signal detection, and classification, consistent, standardized, and reliable results, and a permanent copy of each field of view and the cells for second review or just for future data as well. And this is really one of the key features of going automated is the fact that you have a digital copy of your slides and each lab can choose how long they keep those digital images. But this can be a great tool for any labs that have training programs as well and you want those texts to review these slides. But you know, the more you view slides manually, of course, the signals bleach over time. So this is a great solution for that because you can just scan the slide one time then you have the images and you can have as many people as you want viewing those images and looking at those images over time. Other benefits of having the software here is beyond just the fish scanning is really the database of how you manage the cases and how automated this can be as well. So the central portal here of the database is where all the cases are stored um, you can really go into a paperless workflow by having a system like this. Um, it has easy navigation through the case list. You can click on the case one click and you'll see patient information overview. Um, you'll see statistics of the slide scans. Um, there's a, it has a reliable secure database, customizable reports you can create within the system that can then be sent or copied over to the LIS system. Um, a lot of search engines and data fields that can be used to create customized filters that you can use for laboratory statistics. And also it can be fully integrated with laboratory barcodes that you use and with your LIS system in order to send that information back to the LIS with images. Also, you'll have a centralized imaging system. So when you have a scanning system, all of those images are going to be stored on a centralized server. And then from there, anybody can have access to those cases. 
um, well, anybody within your network. <laughs> so this offers a secured portal for the directors um, or pathologists that need to log in to sign out cases or review cases from, from offsite. Um, they can have the ability to do that and sign off case, cases from any location via secured network. So all of these features really help to optimize the efficiency of the laboratory. It can help by reducing the turnaround time, leading to increased cost savings for the lab, um, reduce the tech time for slide analysis, and a, and a big portion of the tech time savings will come from them not having to capture images or really enhance the images or do really much manipulation to images. That is really a huge time savings for technologists. You can also reanalyze digital images using different sensitivity levels. If you have a weak slide or stronger slide um, that comes out in a run, you no need to rescan the slides over again. Then you have the ability also to apply enhancements across all the images uh, with a quick single click. And again, you can always view the original images within the software as well. So these features of the digital analysis really helps to overcome slide variability and debris that you might see from run to run. Um, it makes it a lot easier to analyze even weak signals. And then you have the ability to immediately document that case. It's really easy to select just a couple of the images. You have hundreds of images to choose from and then you can easily send the report or send those images to the LAS system. And again, the remote access that you have to review and analyze from anywhere using the Genesis Anywhere. So here, are basically an overview of a couple studies that we've done um, that show the increased lab productivity with over 55% time savings in this study, which was comparing a manual workflow to um, using the high fish analysis platform. So here you can just see a couple probes that were listed and the time savings that resulted in each one. Also, we've done an analysis of the accuracy of automation to do the concordance um, for a study of 130 cases. And we had an average correlation of 98% across these different probes. So I think that's always one of the concerns laboratories have is what is the concordance gonna be? And I think you can be confident that it's going to be um, very concordant. Again, 98% concordance. And here we have, so now kind of going back to the importance of what BioDOT and ASI have done together is to try to help you guys seamlessly connect these two parts from the wet lab to the scanning and analysis platform. So here is a quick video to show you how that LIS integration works. Essentially, I'm manually putting in an XML file that came from the BioDOT machine. Our system imports that automatically, it happens very quick, and you'll see it brings in those cases for the status of new. And all, all cases that come from the BioDOT system will be labeled with that automation code of a BioDOT scan. And then our system knows how to automatically take that and it knows which probes are in each region. So in this case, there was only three regions and it will know which probe is in each of those and the other regions are grayed out. So it knows to only scan those three. Um, so that's really one of the huge benefits of this integration we've done. Um, of course, on the automated system, these cases would basically be barcoded as well. The system will read that barcode. All of this is automated workflow after you put those slides onto the tray loader machine. Okay, and now Brian will also will jump back in here to talk about the BioDOT and ASI time study that we performed together. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Robert Joe. Um, you know, so, so we did all this work, we did all this great integration, uh, we made beautiful slides, ASI's had, uh, you know, an amazing uh, microscope technology for a long time. We did the integration, we said, okay, well, is this any faster? Have we done anything um, important? 
and uh, the good news was uh, that we we did and we have um, and so what we decided to do um, between the two of us was to create this joint study so we tried to come up with um, you know, sort of a, a number that was relevant to to a typical set of genetics lab so we took 24 pellets uh, and and 84 probes. So we took those 24 pellets, and and some of those some of those were BCR ables. We we had some slides or some pellets um, that we we probed with three probes and eight probes, and so a, a real mix. Or we tried to approximate a real mix that would happen in the laboratory. And so we took those pellets. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Biodot is in Irvine, California, and uh, ASI is down in Carlsbad. So we're about 60 miles away from each other, and so we we took our pellets. We took the the 24 pellets that had been harvested, uh, put them put them on our instruments. So we we dropped the cells, we applied the probe, we did the denaturing, uh, we did the DAPI, um, and so at the end of our process, I had uh, 24 slides in a in a flat and a uh, USB drive with with the data that um, the data file that uh, Bobby Joe was referring to and so I, I grabbed those and drove the 60 miles down to uh, Bobby Joe and Carlsbad. I handed her my my slides um, and the thumb drive and in approximately five and a half hours um, the ASI microscope had scanned each of those 84 probes um, which uh, was a big deal then is, is still a big deal. Uh, so if you look at the data to the right um, you'll see that we we compared the automated analysis with a manual scoring, uh, looking at those those same slides um, from a manual perspective, we had the licensed set of geneticists go through the slides and, and score them just as they would um, uh, on a normal day. The average on the manual side was about 15 minutes. Um, we were able to cut that down to less than than four. Um, sorry, less than less than five minutes. Uh, I think, Bobby Joe, I think that we've sent you some slides recently that you were doing in sort of the three and a half minute range. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Yeah, so, so you know, it's a big deal. Um, you know, we, and this sort of goes back to a lot of the conversations that I had with, with ASI management and Bobby Joe a long, a long time ago that, you know, intuitively you just really you know that if you can put more content on a single device, uh, if you can put that content um, in a place where the microscope can easily go to, and the hard part, uh, can you tell you know the microscope what to do? Uh, you can have a big impact. And so, um, when you look at the when you look at the um, you know the data on the on the left hand side of the screen, you know, the big thing that jumps out to you is really analysis, right? I mean, the, the big big win, um, even using our slide, is really leveraging what we've done to improve analysis, cutting that 21 hours of of technologist time um, in an house and down to, to six and a half hours. So it's, it, ha it has a real impact in, in laboratories, um, in, in efficiency, in cost, in time, um, in quality, in confidence and result. Um, so, you know, like I said, I, I think we've, we're both proud of the work that we've done individually, but, but I, I think we, we both really appreciate, um, you know, what we've, we've sort of figured out how to do uh, together. Yeah, okay, and we will move on to the, um, just kind of summarizing what we've talked about today, again, is adding automation for advanced fish diagnostics. Again, we want to optimize the efficiency of the lab, have superb accuracy, and an exceptional user experience. And now we will open it up for the Q and A. Thank you everybody for joining us. Again, everyone, if you look at the control panel on the right side, there is a questions drop down. So feel free to type in your questions there and we'll try to go over as many as possible. Uh, we do have uh, the first question is uh, more geared for, for Brian. Uh, how much probe savings will we see with BioDot solution? Okay, uh, thanks for the question and always, always about the probe. Um, so uh, that will vary from lab to lab. Um, and so I can't say specifically how much any individual lab um, might, might reduce their reagent 
um, usage down to. Um, but it's important just for us to sort of throw out that, that we're using 0 0.5 uh, microliters of reagents uh, per assay. So I think you know, anyone can sort of figure out in their own lab what that what that might mean. And 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 again, that 0 0.5 is the actual material that you're putting into the into the region into the reaction region. Um, so that's after any um, any dilutions um, that you would use uh, post you know, once the once the probes get into the lab. Often there's a a dilution that that 0 0.5 is is of the mixed mixed solution. So thanks for the question. And our next question is, um, how long does it take to scan the slides? Um, yeah, oh, thank you. Question, yeah. Um, so the scan times of the slides can definitely vary based on how large the area is and how dense the cells are on the slide. Uh, so average suspension slides, like on an average two region type slide, you know, it's typically somewhere between four and five minutes for the average slide. With bio dot slides, because the cells are concentrated into such a small area, we can actually skip one whole part of our typical scan, which is our density scan that we typically start at a 10x in order to see where the densest areas of cells are. But on a bio dot slide, the cells are already super dense. So we just start right in the middle at a 40x or 60x oil objective start the scan and it only needs to capture a few frames to have 300, 400 cells. So with bio dot scans, we've seen times as quick as two minutes per region. Um, and, and another you know, key component here to this automated process is combining that you know, consistency from the wet lab into the scanning and analysis portion. Our next question is for Brian. Um, is the BioDot solution feasible for a small laboratory uh, handling 20 cases or so per day? Uh, yes, yeah, so good good question. So um, for those of you who sort of know BioDot and, and have, have known BioDot for a long time, we're sort of known as a big, Big lab, big solution um, story. What we've we're, we're really excited. We've we've recently developed, and and a few labs have already received uh, what we call the CellRider S platform. Uh, CellRider S um, is a benchtop version of the larger systems that we've had out for a number of years. Uh, and like so, we're, we're really excited. We've already put it into labs that are doing fewer samples than than that. Um, both for carry the and amper fish, uh, the system will hold 24 slides uh, and 12 uh, tubes per per batch. Uh, so certainly, uh, there's we're like I said, we're 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 very excited that now there's options for everyone. Our next question is about the barcodes. Uh, so where do the barcodes come from, and what kind of barcode types are available for BioDot and ASI? You need another hour. <laughs> um, so, Bobby, Jim, maybe I'll chat a little bit and then pass it on to you. Is that okay? Um, so, you know, barcodes, it's, it's an interesting question. Um, not all labs have barcode technology um, implemented. Um, the Cell Rider platform uh, comes with barcode printing capabilities, so we can help with that. Um, but typically, we're we're introducing the system into labs and lab environments that already have some sort of barcoding system. And so we would um, likely adapt our reading and um, matching software to what's existing in the lab. Um, and then, you know, we, we always work obviously with, with ASI to, to make sure that those are, those are um, uh, compatible, right? So the information is flowing, but uh, Bobby Joe, do you have any, any constraints? Um, yeah, so ASI can also implement with laboratory barcodes um, through the LIS. So it's just a matter of, yeah, usually configuring that to work with your LIS system. Uh, we scan 1D or 2D barcodes on our system. Um, but if you have the combined solution between BioDot and ASI, then basically ASI is going to use whatever barcode can comes off the BioDot machine. 
So whether that yeah was something from the LIS, like once the info has been entered to BioDOT, then that becomes simpler to import it to the ASI solution as well. Yeah, I would just say that you know when it comes to barcodes, there's sort of two elements. One is can you physically read the barcode? And so it's important to distinguish whether or not you have 1D or 2D, which is pretty well served. And it sounds like you know ASI and BioDOT can can write, can read either. Um, sometimes the size of that barcode is important, um, but then it's really the number, right? What what do you assign to that barcode? Um, and so it's really about accession numbers and how do accession numbers on tubes match the slides? Um, and so we just, you know, we, we before any implementation um, and even in some of the initial sales calls, we can sort of talk to you about your your barcodes and how they match and how we would how we how we would continue that matching on the our platform. And I think we can do one last question. We do have quite a few questions, so any that we are unable to answer at this time. Uh, we will be reaching out via email, uh, so feel free you know, to also um, send me an email as well. You have my email in the webinar confirmation, crystalm at spectral-imaging.com. So feel free to submit additional questions there, but we will go ahead and, and, and do one more. Uh, there's a question about LIS uh, integration. Uh, can we interface with uh, other LIS systems. Maybe both of us, Bobby Joe. I'll start. Yes, so sure. <laughs> start. Okay, or or either way. Sorry. Um, yeah, I just just because for us the LIS is sort of an important piece. Um, if you think about it, you know our instrument needs to know the list of cases and then the probes um, that have been assigned for each case. And so, yeah, we 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 recognize that early on, and so we would work with your um, LIS team. Uh, to get us the data that we need. It's a relatively straightforward um, data file. Um, the nice thing is that once it gets into our infrastructure and our um, our environment, then we create the data um, that ASI um, needs, and so you don't need a secondary interface. Um, that can be tricky, right? LIS resources are, are scarce um, and sometimes difficult to, to access, and so, um, you know, again, something that, that I think the two of us recognized early on is that if we can close that gap, if we can if we can pass the information directly to ASI as opposed to going back to LIS first, as an, interme as an intermediary, uh, we can streamline hopefully that for everyone. So, right, and I'll just add to that from ASI side. Um, that's exactly correct. We we also can interface with different um, LIS systems in the laboratory. Uh, we can we support multiple different formats for that. But again, with, with this combined solution, uh, you only have to do that once, which is through the BioDot machine, and we will take the information that comes through their system. However, the ASI will be the one then sending the information back to your LIS. So we'll take the connectivity from the final of the data in the report, and we do have integration to send that back to the LIS system as well. So it's kind of a, a full loop of coming in to BioDOT, going through ASI, and then ASI reports it back to the LIS. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. And special thanks to you, Bobby, Joe, and Brian, uh, as our presenters today. Uh, we hope uh, you all enjoyed the presentation. And again, any questions uh, that went unanswered, we will be reaching out via email within the next couple of days. Um, also, some of you have asked if uh, we can share a recording of the webinar. A recording will be available upon request, uh, so feel free to contact me via email and I can provide you with a copy of, of their recording. Uh, thanks again, everyone, and we hope you have a great day.